This is a government car. It showed how huge a split there was between the government and ordinary people. I, raised in a spirit of brotherhood and equality, hated this from childhood. Luxury is in everything. The back seat, a sofa indeed, was recessed into the back so that you were hidden from the eyes of the plebeians. It's soft and warm. You can open a window or a vent in summer or turn the heat on in winter. Your gourd soul feels comfortable with the fabric-covered roof. And if you are a kind person, you can take your servants with you. There's plenty of room. Today, everything is the same. Nothing's changed, except one thing. Old cars have a soul. Here in the Zim is the creator soul, not the soul of the people who drove it. The factory is Molotova. It sounds like an echo from the past, but if we say Zim, we immediately understand what is being talked about. Even the abbreviation itself draws in our imagination a picture of a government car that is big, black, with an abundance of chrome and different artsy lines. A car that reminds of American cars and its concept. Yes, indeed. It was inspired by many, and by Buick in particular. Zim became the first car with a monocoque body and had three rows of seats. In those years, all vehicles were body-on-frame construction, which was popular then. And, frankly speaking, Zim actually did have a frame. There is a movable subframe under the engine that is attached to the body with bolts. Now, let's open the hood. You can open it both to the left and to the right. I cannot say that's convenient. The engine is amazing. Unification is in everything. To put it in a nutshell, the engine is based on the Gaz 11 engine that is based on the engine of a Chrysler fighter in a Dodge D5. It's a petrol engine in line 6 with a volume of 3,485 cubic centimeters. Max power is 90 horsepower at 3,600 RPMs. Maximum torque was 215 newton meters at 2,100 RPMs. An interesting feature is that the body number is duplicated on the hood. The reason was that, as cars were serviced in mechanic shops, their hoods were removed and placed in a warehouse. In order not to lose your hood, among the others, the body number was duplicated. With a combination of 50% from Pobeda and from Gaz, the only difference in the engine is with the engine-driven accessories. A double-barrel carburetor is installed here as well. Antenna. If you are going to rob this car, God forbid, remember, the antenna costs a minimum of 50,000 rubles in any condition. Some words about Zim itself. Let's admire it. The body is of a pontoon design, so to speak. The wings stand out visually, but they're not as pretentious as they were in previous models. As they smoothly flow into the body, as you can see here as well. Something to understand. The Zim was created extremely fast. They began production in only two and a half years. It was produced from the ground up, and the USSR hadn't been able to produce such miracles prior to that. And it worked out. 
More than 5.5 meters of iron weighing almost 2 tons does not look that massive. Rounded lines and chrome elements hide the big size of the car, and an abundance of monumental chrome adds luxury. A flag on the hood, the zeal emblem, and the entire grille shining in the sun is something to see. To break it down, Zim is an overblown Pobeda, which will become clear inside. One difference from Pobeda is in its paint, many layers of nitro enamel with polishing in between. That's why the Zim still looks perfect after so many years. Inside, it also looks Pobeda style, but here you don't just see a clock, but the clock. Not a speedometer, but the speedometer. There was a radio also, but it's being repaired. Some interesting features. Notice the doors are covered with factory polyethylene. You can see how many years have passed. And again, you can say, Ivan, you're talking about firewood here. No. It's not firewood, it's a car that has lived to this day without any restoration. Native fabric, native handles, everything is just from the factory. It's unique. By the way, the clock is electromechanical. There is an electric cigarette lighter, ashtrays, there are lighted indicators on the dashboard alerting you about an engaged parking brake and a high temperature in the cooling system. All iron is painted with a wood texture. Yes, it looks unpresentable, but I have to remind you, everything is native here. It's a time capsule, so to say. A bit old, but it is what it is. Velour, the smell of antiquity, like an old sofa. The steering wheel is huge. I mean, it's really huge and it might hurt your belly if you're a big guy. There is a key, but it's just to get in. The engine is started by pushing a button with your finger. What a miracle. It's alive. It has an ordinary three-speed gearbox, but a bit of nuance here. There's a torque converter, which is in place of the flywheel. That's why you can start it off in second gear. And that's not all. You can put the car in gear, ease out the clutch, and the car will stand still. You mash the go pedal smoothly and the car starts moving, accelerating you up to 100 kilometers per hour in 37 seconds. The low-speed engine is perfect for a smooth cruise to and from your government dacha or to the Academy of Science. The windshield has two pieces, huge hood with visibility only toward the bright future. The turning radius is 6.8 meters, which is very nice for a car longer than 5 meters. Overall, it's pleasant to drive. The suspension is normal. There is an axle on springs in the back and there is an independent suspension in front. No revelations there. But it was the Zim, which was the first car in the USSR with disc brakes. Strikingly, it's not an automatic transmission, but you drive it as if it were an automatic transmission. That means you can slow down a little without pressing the clutch in. In third gear, if you're hardly moving, it seems like the car is going to die, but the engine keeps running smoothly. You mash the gas pedal down and slowly start to accelerate again. 
This is the miracle of the hydraulic clutch. Some history. The Gorky Automotive Plant began Zim production in 1950 and continued up to 1960. It stood firmly between Pobeda and Zeis. You could buy it for 40,000 rubles. It was a democratic car. There were ambulance cars and taxis based on its design. It even drove on train tracks. This Zim is a car produced in 1955. In all this time, it was owned by the family of a professor. Then it was saved, fixed a bit, but not until recently. But the main thing is, is that it's cherished now. In the summer of 1957, Zim lost its name due to the disgraced surname of Molotova. And this car became just a Gaz-12. Soviet government cars are like a National Economic Achievement Exhibition. Everything is cool, modern, but absolutely unachievable. I'm interested in them just by their place in history, but nothing more. The hunt continues. <laughs>